हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू सेंट एंड्रूज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट गुरगांव दिल्ली एन सी आर सेंट एंड्रूज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट इज़ द बेस्ट कॉलेज इन एंटायर एन सी आर एंड एंटायर कंट्री दिस प्रोवाइड्स अ वेराइटी ऑफ कोर्सेज फ्राम बी टेक बी बी ए बी सी ए एंड ऑल्सो अपकमिंग विद एम बी ए बी सी ए एंड आर्किटेक्चर दिस प्रोवाइड्स फाइनस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर The college has hundred percent placements. It has best hostel accommodations. It is one of the best career choice that you can make for yourself or your children. Subject that we taking in this video is mathematical foundations of computer science. The code is BCA one zero eight. Ah, thus, ah, uh, this is the BCA second semester subject, and uh, the topic is. big o notation that is worst case that is used to describe worst case that we take and this is a fifth lecture from unit 2 okay the big o notation and the worst case see big o notation is one of the most fundamental tools for computer scientists to analyze the cost of an algorithm see we already discussed in our previous lectures what are algorithms and how do actually we discuss the linear and binary search algos also so now we discuss their complexity Like what is the cost of that algorithm? It what resources it it that use the time resources the space resources the, all these comes into the defining the complexity of the algorithm. See mathematically how it is defined. So my big O notation is a mathematical notation that describes the limiting behavior of a function. when the argument tends towards a particular value or infinity, right? So whenever you see that your algorithm is going to an infinity, or near to infinity or to a value that is the maximum like i would say that function can achieve so that kind of a notation is the big o notation it is a member of a family of notation invented by paul batchman edmund landau and others collectively called batchman landau notation or asymptotic notation right so it's a small history and there's a formal definition that we discussed so we try to understand in a very very general way like how we can say uh, like how i can say that how it is taking place see once upon a time we'll understand it a very very common example so that you can understand it see once upon a time there was an indian king who wanted to reward a wise man for his excellence so the wise man asked for nothing but so wheat that would fill a chess board right so the king said okay like in all the time used to say no okay i am happy you are you are very wise and you are very intelligent like what tell me what can i do for you right so what did the mind smiles men said the wise men said that okay i want some some wheat just to fill my chess board okay but he, he said he said okay that's so simple was the mere beginner so then he pronounced that see there are rules like in the first tile i want one grain of wheat like he is telling you how you need to give me the wheat so in the first there is one grain then in the second tile there are two four on the third and each tile it has to fill up by double the amount as the previous one so the nave king like without any thinking he without any hesitation he said okay what is there in it like i am the king i own that much amount of wheat you can have any amount he said and so he actually went and tried like how it goes by so see one this is how you start two then you took to four then you took to 16 so it is like kept on increasing and then he saw so how many grains of wheat does that thing go this my man so you need to have an answer see we know there is just suppose at a square by a square so we have total 64 tiles so the final would be 2 to the power 64 grains of wheat now if you do the online calculation you will end up adding 1.844744 into 10 to the power 19 that is about 18 followed by 18 zeros you can say roughly i can say since is 19 so i have say fix it that side But still, if I take the lower value or the lower bound, it will be eighteen followed by eighteen zeros. Assuming that each grain weighs zero point zero one gram, at least that would be the weight of it, na? No? Like you, you can weigh, see to how much it weighs. So it gives that gives us one eight four four six seven four four zero seven three seven tons of weight, and one eighty four billion tons is quite a lot.
right so see how much he demanded so that is the beauty of computation i can say or that is the beauty of expen exponentiation so the number grew quite fast later for exponential growth don't they so the same logic goes for computer algorithms if the required effort to accomplish a task grows exponentially right it it is it is exponential growth so it is like very very tedious like so if the required effort to accomplish a task grows exponentially with respect to the input size it can end up becoming enormously large now the square of 64 is 4096 if you add that number to 2 to the power 64 it will be lost outside the significant digit so 2 to the power 64 will be outside the significant digit like it's very large so when we look at the growth rate we only care about the dominant terms and since we want to analyze the growth with respect to the input size the coefficient which only multiply the number rather than growing the input size do not contain useful information right so you only look at the growth like the number which is growing the coefficient don't have much value to it like you multiply 2 to it you multiply 3 to it or you multiply any so the coefficient are just a they don't grow they are static right so you you actually look at which part is growing so you look at the growing part because if you multiply it two so the two remains constant for that amount of time like if someone's co if uh, some complexity is uh, like two n i would say so that is you n is growing you can you have to concentrate on n not on two so this is what it means to say in here so big o describes the upper bound of the complexity now what do i understand by the upper bound see that is it bounds a function only from above like what is the maximum that the function can reach that is big o so for example if i take a case of insertion sorting it takes linear time in best case so if if it is the best case like if it is only arranged so it will take linear time that is order of n and quadratic time in worst case right so your quadratic time is the one that is taking more time so we can safely said that the time complexity of insertion sort is n square right n to the power 2 note that or order of n square also covers linear time so this will be covering n also because n square means n into n so you're already you know you're already covering m you're moving twice the n right okay so your low upper bound is n square because it is already covering your best case and it is covering your oh, mm, best case also and average case also so over or upper bound means like what is the highest that it can reach or what is so that gives you the worst time that this is the maximum amount of time that it will require so now you understand what is worst time and like what is big o so formally if you feel like writing you can say it that uh, order of g of n if there exists a positive integer n and a positive constant c such that function of n is less than equal to c into g of n right so you are looking that this the uh, the function is less than or equal to the gth part of it multiplied with the coefficient so this grows very large so the general step wise procedure for fig or routine analysis is as follows so first you figure out what input is and what n wants then you express the maximum number of operation the algorithm performs in terms of n then you eliminate all the uh, all x uh, excluding the highest so you take the highest order terms so whichever is the highest you take that if it is n square n cube you will taking n cube if it is n cube n four you will taking n to the power four so you look at the highest order terms and you remove all the constant factors right so these are basically a general notation that uh, i can give you an example of so basically this asymptotic notation is used to measure and compare the worst case scenario of algorithm theoretically for any algorithm so big o analysis should be straight forward as long as we correctly identify the operation that are dependent on and the input size so here i give, i have the running time complexity in term of big o and this is the input size t so how it is going c order of n exponential is large and c to the power n then n to the power c so 2 to the power i can say 64 and then 64 to the power 2 it is uh, you can take it this way n log n then linear and the best is the log n so log n takes the running time complexity minimum complexity and whatever be the input size of it and see this n uh, oh 
this n to the power something or c to the power something or an exp n negation is something which is growing very fast in a very small input size they reach a very high amount of time so this is how this is decreasing so perfor uh, performance and I, I hope you understand so this is extra like in my video that i've added for you if you want to go through it you can if you don't feel like but your topic is covered till this slide so this is still something uh, like extra i want for your knowledge that i'm providing you see for performance analysis of an algorithm the running time measurement is only re not only relevant matrix but also we need to see the memory usage so along with the time we need to have memory usage so this is known as memory footprint of the algorithm or the space complexity so here we need to measure and compare the worst case theoretical space complexity for the performance analysis so it basically depends on two major aspects described below first the implementation of the program is responsible for memory usage right so whatever you implement requires a memory usage so we can assume that recursive implementation will always reserve more memory than the corresponding iterative implementation of a particular problem so recursive will have more memory than the iterations right so anything that is recursive will need more memory compared to the iteration so for the other one is n the input size or the amount of storage required for each item for example a single algorithm with a high amount of input size can consume more memory than a complex algorithm with less amount of input size right so a very a simple algorithm that is using high amount of input size it is consuming more memory and there may be complex algorithm which we are using very small amount of input size so you need to understand like how memory is dependent simple with more memory or complex with lesser memory right and then there comes at the end space time trade off and efficiency see if there is usually a trade off between optimal memory use and running time performance so in general for an algorithm the space efficiency and time efficiency reaches two opposite ends so these are like here if i go one way my space increases the other way my time increases so if my space is increasing maybe my time is decreasing if my time is increasing my space is decreasing so there are two opposite ends so the more time efficiency you have the less space efficiency you have like so the more and more time efficient efficient your algorithm is the more space it would be getting so example merge sort is a merge sort algorithm is very very exceeding fast that is it requires a lot of space but it it is very fast so the time complexity is less where in the space complexity is too much and a bubble sort is is very very slow but it requires minimum space so you need to see according to your requirement what it fits so at the end of this topic we can conclude that finding an algorithm that works in less running time and also having less requirement of memory says can make a huge difference in how well an algorithm works so this is the art of optimizing so how do you optimize in the two that is the how do you optimize into the time also and you in time into the memory also so that's all and i hope you like the video i tried to explain it a very general way i tried to give a very general examples to the like i really so i hope you really enjoyed it so there are few questions that can be asked like what is big o notation what do you understand by worst case so you need to understand if the two are same and you can it can also ask you with an example so i've given an example you can take any algorithms and the last is this a question that i included for your general understanding purpose that is trade off between space and time complexity so that is all for today i hope you liked the video thank you